Greetings, fellow mathematicians. We're gonna take a look at how to find the McLaurin series for sine of x. Now, this is gonna be a little bit more complicated than finding the McLaurin series for e to the x because the derivatives of sine of x are a little bit more complicated. Now, let's make sure you realize what we're gonna calculate. We're gonna calculate the coefficients of a McLaurin series as an nth derivative of our function evaluated at zero and then we divide that nth derivative by n factorial. So let's go ahead and start by calculating a few derivatives of our function f of x defined as sine of x. The first derivative, derivative of sine, that's cosine of x. So pretty straightforward. We're gonna differentiate that again to get the second derivative and the derivative of cosine of x, negative sine of x. And we're going to differentiate that yet again to get the third derivative. And just be careful with your signs. Sine of x differentiates to cosine of x. That negative will stay. So we get negative cosine of x. Now, if we were to differentiate this again to the fourth derivative, we would get back to where we started because when you differentiate cosine of x, the derivative is negative sine of x. There's a negative there which cancels out and we get back to sine of x. So instead of putting our fourth derivative below here, let me put that over to the side and we're gonna observe a pattern. So let's write our fourth derivative. And make sure you realize here that notation, that's not an exponent, but rather it's the notation for a higher order derivative. So that's the fourth order derivative of our function, which if you differentiate the third derivative, you'll get back to sine of x. All right, and then they all differentiate pretty much the same as over here, and you get the same pattern of derivatives every four terms. So your fifth derivative, that's gonna be cosine of x. Your sixth derivative is gonna be negative sine of x. And then your seventh order derivative, that's gonna be negative cosine of x. And if you were to differentiate this again to get the eighth order derivative, it just goes back and again, it cycles every four terms. Now, to get your coefficients in a McLaurin series, we're gonna evaluate these nth derivatives at our center point, x equals zero. And there's really only two values that we're gonna need here, cosine and sine of zero. Cosine values of zero are one, all your sine values here at zero will become zero. So let's go ahead and evaluate these all at x equals zero. And we'll observe a pattern in these derivatives. All right, so what we know here, since sine of zero is zero, anything with a sine term evaluates to zero. So we get zero and zero. Another one here, that's zero. And due to the pattern here, that one is also zero. Now the cosine terms, cosine of zero is positive one. They're gonna be non-zero. So here, cosine of zero, that's one but now negative cosine of zero is negative one. And we can put those same values there. And now we should have enough information to observe a pattern. First, notice anything with an even order derivative with the sine terms, like the second derivative, the fourth derivative, sixth derivative, they all evaluate to zero. So we can observe this that the nth derivative evaluated at zero is zero for all the even order terms. All right, and that means in our general version of a McLaurin series, half the coefficients evaluate to zero. Now, how we actually get the formula for the version here in summation notation for the McLaurin series of sine of x 
is we're gonna split this sum over even values for n and odd values for n. All right, so we have enough information to observe a pattern. And let's go ahead and write down the general Maclaurin series. We have this going from n equals zero to infinity of the nth derivative evaluated at zero divided by n factorial times x to the n. From what we observed, we're gonna split this sum over even and odd values for n. So let me be a little less precise in my notation. First, we'll get the even values of n. And that's where the nth derivative evaluated at zero for the even order terms will evaluate to zero. And we're also gonna split our sum over the odd values. Since n goes from zero to infinity, we're now splitting this over the two parts. All right, and technically here, both those sums still go to infinity, but this one over the even numbers to infinity and this one over the odd numbers to infinity. All right, now we can immediately conclude from what we just observed from our pattern of derivatives, this evaluates to zero because the nth derivative evaluated at zero equals zero for all the even order terms. So the only thing that survives here is that last sum over the odd values. And this is where I'm going to be a little bit more precise with notation. We are only summing over the odd integers here and odd numbers, they have the form two times an integer plus one. So we're gonna use that other integer as k and that is an integer. So two times a number, a positive integer, plus one, that is odd. Now let me go ahead and put that into our formula here. All n's we're gonna replace with 2k plus one. And we're gonna now try to observe a formula for the nth order derivative where n is odd. Now let's take a look at our information up here. And we should be able to find a pretty nice formula for the odd ordered derivatives here evaluated at zero. Now let's take a look at them. We have our first derivative, that's positive one. Next odd order, third derivative is negative one. Positive one, negative one, that appears to be an alternating term. So this probably should be negative one to a power And to get it right, let's just observe 2k plus one is the form of an odd number. Here, our order is one. That would mean k is zero. And it looks like we can make that negative one to the k power. And that would work. So if we start with k as zero, that gives you the first derivative. Negative one to the zero power is one and then I'll go to the third derivative. That's where k is going to be one, and that does correctly give negative one. So we can go ahead and put that into our term here for the nth order derivative. That's just negative one to the k, but we're gonna replace all other n's with two k plus one as well. So here our sum goes from now k equals zero to infinity. The nth derivative here evaluated at zero. We're gonna write that as what we concluded here, negative one to the k power. And be careful here, we have a factorial, but here n is an odd integer. We're gonna replace that n factorial with 2k plus one factorial in the denominator. And also notice you have powers there, x to the nth power, 
those nth powers now turn to 2k plus 1 powers. So x raised to the 2k plus 1. And just to make this look a little bit more normal, usually you use in your Calculus 2 course n as your index. So let's just change here all k's to n. And what we get here is the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n divided by 2n plus 1 factorial and then times x to the 2n plus 1. And that is our Maclaurin series for sine of x. Most of the work here was in calculating a few derivatives, observing a pattern, and trying to find a nice formula for the non-zero derivative values. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video on finding a McLaurin series. If you did, support the channel, like and subscribe.